بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I'm Dr. Ahmed Magaish Assistant Lecturer in the Periodontology Department Today we will start with the periodontal chart uh, First we will we need to know what is the periodontology as a science The science is studying the periodontium The periodontium is a gingiva with the periodontal ligament and the bone and cementum. This apparatus or four compartment of the periodontium. We will start with the periodontal chart. The, the first page of the chart, periodontal chart, included the clinical record four. Number one, it is the name. For recording and communication with the case. The second one is the age, and this is an important topic in your diagnosis of the periodontal disease if it is a chronic periodontal mm -hmm. disease or aggressive periodontal disease. Uh, the sex. And important because females is more exposed to aggressive periodontitis and because of the hormonal changes in the females. The address is an, the important to arrange the visits if the patient needs more transportation or live in the far area, we can compress your visits or decrease the number of visits. The occupation is very important because it may determine the economic level of the patient, which affect on the treatment plan of the patient and also other occupational hazards, just like the uh, uh, medical staff, just like uh, workers on fact in factories um, or other occupation. The chief complaint is the important topic here. We, uh, as a diagnosis chart, we take the own patient words. It's different from the diagnosis chart because the diagnosis chart, patient complain from a general problem in his teeth. But here in the Periodontal chart, the patient is referred to you as a periodontist. So he will have a periodontal issue or a periodontal chief complaint. Just like the pleading expression, just like the spontaneous pleading, just like the food impaction between teeth. Just like itching pain between teeth, just like mobility of the teeth, just like the long teeth patient may complain of long teeth be due to recession, and we will know what is the recession. The most important issue here is the age. Age it is an important factor because we facing two important diseases. One of them is the aggressive periodontitis, and the aggressive periodontitis meaning violent, not meaning severe. Aggressive periodontitis and the chronic periodontitis, the two diseases of the uh, uh, of the of the period. The aggressive periodontitis, we will discuss it uh, later, inshallah. The aggressive periodontitis affecting the young age between 15 and 35 years old. And as you see in this radiograph and the clinical picture, that the patient lose his teeth and have a great uh, a bone loss between teeth, and this is without 
helpless or without periodontal infection. So here we called it aggressive because uh, the aggressive destruction without violent or without large amount of calculus. So as you, you, you will take in your literature, the aggressive periodontitis, we have a great bone loss according if it's localized or generalized. You have a great bone loss not coincident with the amount of structure. You see the propping here measured 10 millimeters or 67 millimeters and the tooth is clean without great amount of calculus. Other than the chronic one, the chronic periodontitis. The, the, the chronic meaning long period. You see this case is have a great amount of calculus and a great destruction. This is ordinary. A, a amount of destruction here is coincident with the amount of calculus, not like the previous one. The amount of destruction is not coincident with the amount of calculus. Uh, we will go next for the medical history. The medical history as the diagnosis chart can affect our decision in the diagnosis and the treatment the planning of this patient. For example, the liver disease affect the bleeding or patient taking anticoagulant or uh, uh, just like the diabetes and the smoking it affects the healing. Uh, risk factors for uh, uh, periodontal diseases like diabetes, just like the hormonal changes, or any other medical problem. As we uh, discussed before in the medically compromised uh, patient chapter. Medical alert means that it is the uncontrolled disease that will affect your treatment plan. You should first uh, refer to the physician, refer the patient to the physician to be controlled first. The extraoral examination and the intraoral examination <coughs> discussed before in the diagnosis chart. If there is any problem, you will write it here or write it here. Or if there is no problem, you will write no abnormality detected or NAD. Here we go. The second page. The second page consists of gingiva and hygiene and functional factors. Number one in the periodontal finding is the gingiva. To determine your periodontal disease, you should examine the gingiva for the first. Examine the gingiva according to its color, according to its contour, according to its consistency, according to its texture, according to its size, and the bleeding and exudate. So changing, number one is changing in the color. This is according to the problem. Maybe changing in the color may be localized or generalized. The changing in the color may be mild, may be moderate, severe. Changing in the color may be marginal, at the gingival margin only, may be papillary, at the papilla only, or may be diffuse, at the marginal 
and the papillary and the attached structure. And this is description or the description of the color here. And the contour and the consistency and texture, it is the same. We will see examples of all this. Number one, it is the longitudinal section of the tooth and the surrounding redontium. Number one, it is a gingival sulcus here, or what is called a free gingiva. That is a free gingiva. Why is called a free gingiva? Because this part of the gingiva is not attached to the tooth. And this is this part between the free gingiva and the tooth. Uh, um, it's called a free gingival groove or a gingival sulcus. Then the periodontal ligament will be here attached. That all, all this part is the attached gingiva. All this part is the attached gingiva. Okay. You see, this shiny one is the free gingiva or the free gingival groove. Then here from this point or the end of the free gingiva to this red one, it is, uh, or the red line, it is the uh, attached gingiva and the line between the alveolar mucosa and uh, the attached gingiva is called a mucogingival junction or a mucogingival line. We will discuss it later. A change in the color. Change in the color may be a normal one, it is a pale pink color, just like this. Maybe a brown pigmentation, just like this, or just like this. Brown pigmentation. <coughs> and Brown pigmentation may be physiological brown pigmentation or uh, smokers and melanodus or any other uh, issue that uh, you uh, know it in the, the structure of the pigmentation or the uh, or the red color in our coincident with the inflammation just like so the, the color change may be red, may be pale pink, may be bluish red, may be brown, according to your case. The change in contour. The contour or the normal contour, it is a knife edge contour, just like this photo. It is a knife edge contour. It is the normal that indicate no inflammation. No inflammation. It is a knife edge contour. So when the periodontal problem or the gingival inflammation occurs, this knife edge will turn to plant papilla or pulpless papilla, just like this, or cratered in some diseases. The consistency or change in consistency, number three, changing in consistency, may be form in the, in the normal state, it's form uh, or soft in the diseased state due to inflation of the float. For four, it is a texture. This is the normal appearance, just like the orange peel. The normal appearance of the gingiva uh, present with stippling due to the attachment of periodontal fibers in the attached mucosa. The stippling present in the attached mucosa and the papillas not present in the free gingiva because the free gingiva is not attached by periodontal fibers. When the inflammation occurs, the stippling disappears. You see, this is the stippling present, and this is the 
free gingiva, you see free of stippling here. That is free gingiva, the crown is structure, the free gingiva, and this is the stippling prism, just like surface for marsh. So in the inflammation, you will see inflation here of the fluid, here inflation of the fluid, so the stippling here disappear. So when you return to our short, <coughs> the texture here uh, it's changing in the texture here. Uh, we will write in the description if it is a present so a stepping present or is it is absent or uh, you will write absence of stippling. Okay. Uh, but you should consider that the stippling is present only in the papilla and diffuse on the attached gingiva. Okay. The localization. Localization means if the changing color is localized or the changing color is generalized, the changing contour is localized. The change in contour is generalized and the consistency and the auto picture. That's according to the distribution of the disease. If we have a localized inflammation, so the change in color will be localized or in consistency and the contour and the picture. Okay. Localized means if the affected site is less than 30 percentage generalized if the affected site is more than 30 percentage severity is mild or moderate or severe according to your case The next issue is the bleeding and uh, exceeded. In our periodontal or gingival inflammation, we will see positive bleeding with propping. So we will write in the chart positive on propping, positive on propping, or negative on propping according to your case. <coughs> when you just insert your periodontal probe you will do just a provocation of the bleeding just enter uh, uh, your probe into the gingival surface if there is a bleeding you will write positive if there is no bleeding you will write negative the exudate just like here in the periodontal abscess for example you will see pus that uh, 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 Get off your gingival sulcus and examine the by milking the gingiva in the coronal direction. Like the next issue is the hygiene. We will uh, uh, mark on the plaque amount and the calculus amount and the stain amount. The, um, the most important thing is you should know the difference between the plaque and the calculus. Uh, the plaque is a soft accumulation of the dippers and the bacteria that can be removed by crushing, the ordinary crushing. What is the calculus? It's the calcification of this uh, plaque biofilm. And cannot be removed by pressure. You will know uh, uh, um, in details what is the plaque and what is the plaque by film in the, in the literature and the calculus and uh, 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 how the calculus is formed in the literature, inshallah. <coughs> calculus may be supragingival, seen with a naked eye, or subgingival, examined by the explorer. 
Stain may be intrinsic or extrinsic. The, inter the intrinsic uh, need internal bleaching, just like uh, uh, the intrinsic stains in the tooth, or uh, uh, extrinsic uh, that removed by uh, bleaching or polishing, just like the <clears throat> because of smoking, because of foods, because of tea and coffee, because of material. This is the plaque, this is a soft accumulation of the debris, and this can be removed by the ordinary brushes, well, brushing. But the patient cannot do brushing because of the bleeding. You see the ginger here is inflamed with the pulpless <coughs> contour and uh, changing in the color and the contour without stippling, as we know in the gingival description but here it is the calculus calculus this is a hard accumulation hard accumulation is a supra gingival calculus and this is a sub gingival calculus under the gingiva that's need uh, an instrumentation the stain may be mild may be heavy you will record this the next issue this is very, very important. It is the functional issues, including frimitus and barofunctional habits and the functional relation. Number one, the frimitus. <clears throat> what is the meaning of the frimitus? The frimitus, it is a testing for movement of the teeth during function. Other than the mobility, mobility, it is a testing of the movement of the teeth without function. The frimitus, it is an indicative for a trauma from occlusion. Trauma from occlusion. And inshallah, you will uh, uh, take a chapter uh, uh, titled Trauma from Occlusion and the Traumatic Occlusion. So, what is Frimitus? Or how we test the Frimitus? You will place your index finger along the buccal and the labial surface of the maxillary teeth and the patient asks it to close and open the teeth together. <clears throat> you put your index finger at the buccal or labial surface of the maxillary tooth. You <clears throat> can test your rethrymethus Tooth by tooth or by group of teeth like this. Tooth by tooth or group of teeth like this. So, you will test the frimitus at the vertical <coughs> and the protrusive movement and the lateral movement. The patient in the vertical with, will be asked to open and close in the vertical or and open and close in the protrusive and open and close in the or um, or move head mandible in the lateral uh, uh, direction and you will put your index finger or uh, the tip of the finger according in the tooth by tooth or a group of <clears throat> if it is positive you will detect here positive if it is negative, you will detect here negative, and you will detect your grade. The frimitus is graded by class one, class two, and class three. Class one, it is a mild vibratory movement, just like vibratory, just like vibratory movement, vibratory sensation. Class two, uh, uh, frimitus, it is easily palpable vibration, but not visible movement. Plus three, it is 
a a a movable uh, it is a movement visible by naked eye and you will write here sight parafunctional habits including tapping including clenching including bruxism it is not graded functional relation <coughs> Just like the open contact and the pathological migration, and this is two important factors. The open contact uh, may result in, in, to a periodontal uh, disease because of food accumulation, uh, gingival inflammation, and the sequence uh, of the periodontitis will uh, get. Load of bone support and uh, gingival my and uh, uh, tooth migraine. Just like this, this is a bar functional habits. This is here, the, uh, including tapping on one tooth. The tapping is bar functional habit on one tooth. The clenching is a grinding of the teeth during day and the night, and the proxism is a grinding of teeth during night only. You see, this bar functional habits meaning large amount of occlusal trauma and affecting the periodontia. This is the open contact, you see. This is the open contact. If you will have in, improper restriction, so you will have an open contact. This open contact leading to good accumulation, gingival inflammation. <clears throat> so when you do uh, periodontal, uh, treatment here without uh, uh, cleaning this contact or without treatment of this contact by restriction or or s s somewhat <clears throat> you you do nothing uh, you, you will uh, get uh, another food accumulation you will get another gingival inflammation and uh, gingivitis or uh, periodontitis the pathological migration commonly occur in the periodontal disease that is due to the occlusal trauma due to the occlusal trauma or <coughs> because of the loss of the periodontal support this is because of the loss of the periodontal support when the periodontal problems or periodontitis occurs and we lost the periodontal support the normal occlusal forces will be traumatic to this tooth and this tooth can not withstand these forces so it is migrate and the pathological migration is different from the physiological uh, uh, migration uh, that occurs due to the normal elasticity of the periodontal uh, ligament Okay. We're here detecting the gingival description and the hygiene and the functional factors. Returning to this picture, <coughs> this is a tooth and this is a gingival margin you know or the free gingival margin that is caused from the uh, if, uh, the gingival groove started from the free gingival margin to the base of the pocket here and this is the attached gingival and mm -hmm. this is the alveolar mucosa. We need to know that the attached gingiva here it is a very important factor. We should have in the normal state three millimeters or more of the attached gingiva. If uh, this measure is decreased, we have here a mucogingival problem. 
because the amount of attached gingiva or the sufficient amount of attached gingiva that this gets support to the tooth. This, uh, uh, in this situation, patient can perform the ordinary uh, brushing and the eating, and we have an amount of bone support and tissue support to the tooth. When the attached gingiva is decreased, just like many cases, just like the deep periodontal pocket, just like the gingiva recession, just like the harsh renal attachment, we have here a mucogingival problem. <clears throat> but we have a different amount of attached gingiva. We have this unlucky patient that have a minimum amount of the attached gingiva. That you see just one millimeter or <coughs> here two three millimeters or four millimeters this patient have more than according to four millimeters this patient have a great amount of the attached so how how to measure the attached when you insert the probe in the gingival, circles just like this, and the, uh, the probe will stop here, for example. Okay, stop here in the, in the, in the side of the arrow, stop here, for example. This is the free gingival groove. Start from the free gingival margin to the base of the pocket. Okay. All the rest of the, this pink gingiva is called the attached gingiva. All of this is called the attached gingiva till the mucogingival jump. So when we measure the, the length from the free gingiva, the free gingiva line to the mucogingival line, and we uh, just minus the amount of pockets here or amount of a free gingival group here we will get the attached so the attached gingiva it is the amount of gingiva from the base of the pocket to the mucogingival line this is important how we know the mucogingival line or uh, the, the location of the mucogingival line. We have two testers here. We have number one, it is the tension test. That is the tension test. We will pull the lip of the patient. We will pull the lip of the patient so you will see the attachment here between the attached mucosa and the alveolar mucosa or the, or the labial mucosa <coughs> the labial mucosa is the more more red because it's more vascularized and they have an uncharacterized mucosa and uh, uh, the pink mucosa is the attached mucosa because of it is attached to the bone so is the less vascularized than the labial mucosa or the vestibular Mucosa. So when you pull the the lip like this, a line will be drawn bet between the uh, uh, this pink gingiva and this uh, stippler uh, gingiva or the labial mucosa. This is line is called a uh, mucogingival line, or the line between a movable part lip. And the attached part is the attached gene. Okay. The second test it is the roll test. The roll test you can just roll the vestibular mucosa or the lipial mucosa towards to the attached one. This is here. Here is a line will be formed. Here it is a mucogingival line and we use we we use this test in 
cases of uh, recession and uh, uh, loss of the <coughs> attached gingiva because the mucogingival line is uh, uh, not visible like the ordinary case. Periodontal uh, uh, record. The mucogingival problem may be due to high labial frenum. You see, the labial frenum always present in the labial mucosa. So when we have high labial frenum like this, it will affecting the amount of the attached mucosa. Just like this, it will pull this area, will pull this area. And with some uh, degree of uh, bad oral hygiene, it will get to a recession just like this. Okay, and patient will uh, uh, complain of difficult of brushing and the pain in the frenum area. So the mucogingiva problem here occurred due to hygiene, high level frenum and recession. Okay. Number two, the mucogingival problem or the loss of amount of the muco of the attached gingiva may occur also due to recession only. You see here the periodontal pocket depth is minimum, it is measured about one millimeter. <coughs> and the recession here the recession uh, here he perform or uh, get the problem only or may be present as a deep periodontal only we will see a, a video with the mucogingival problem or mucoattached problem. Gingiva is another name for gums, attached or sometimes called mar- You see here, he enters the periodontal probe and we will, uh, uh, we will make it, inshallah, we will know the, what is the periodontal probe and its uh, measurement. Here, we insert the periodontal probe, okay, and he perform a roll test like this uh, to see the mucogingival line so we see here it is a normal state we have a great amount or enough amount of attached mucosa uh, just like uh, this and the, uh, the the amount of attached mucosa meaning amount of good bone support like this gingiva is another name for gums Attached or sometimes called marginal gingiva needs to be recorded. The amount of actual attached gingiva is the visible gum tissue minus the pocket depth as indicated by the white arrow. Attached gingival tissues may appear to be adequate under visual examination. In the other situation here, we have here, this is a mucogingival uh, line or a mucogingival junction and here the amount of pocket is minimum as you see, but the attached gingiva here is uh, lowered, so in consequences, this will turn into a periodontal disease as the video plays. But can be diagnosed inadequate with a thorough periodontal examination. In this case, there is no attached gingiva associated with this lower anterior tooth. The reason it is important to identify these areas is to prevent localized gum and bone recession. There are various periodontal procedures to increase attached gingival tissues and prevent this from happening. 
If left untreated, this recession and bone loss can progress to such severe levels that a tooth may actually fall out on its own. This movie shows how... This is another case of a mucogingiva problem, uh, like the case number two. Uh, it is a mucogingiva problem due to recession only. This is due to recession only. You see here, this is the amount of recession here, and the amount of keratinized mucosa is lower. Okay, this is a part one. We will continue, inshallah, um, uh, uh, with a part two. Uh, thank you for your.